very much and thank you very much to the to you ken and then my fellow panelists i seriously think that uh, this is very very important especially when we have to talk about our macro economic environment vis-a-vis -vis the small and medium enterprises that we run especially in ghana here you and i know that the small and medium enterprises are the engine of growth for any economy if anything the small and medium enterprises help in the employment space they help in building funds when it comes to taxes for the nation it helps in helping a lot of these microeconomic environment issues and some of the things that uh, i would want to tell the small and medium enterprises is that it is very very critical that in the space in which you are and where you are functioning there are critical issues that can affect your profits it can affect your business and therefore it is critical to look at them and some of them is um, the economy in which you are the gdp the gross domestic uh, products in terms of even interest rates how it affects you the government monetary policy the fiscal policies that the government embarks upon whether we like it or not in the space of running an economy key things that the government will need or will use to run the economy is basically using the, mon the monetary policy and also the fiscal policy to run an economy. And that is the space in which you, as the small and medium enterprise, the SMEs are. And these are the things that your eyes must be on in terms of the macroeconomic policies. What are the policies that government is chiming out? I'm um, using Ghana, for example. I mean, typically Ghana, because that's where I am. I mean, if you look at the policies that government is bringing out, the, the SMEs must position themselves to be able to fit in in order to continue being in business. Other than that, they will either be crowded out by government itself or they will have to fold up by themselves. And one of the things I was just, uh, I mean, looking at the budget, I mean, the budget, this is what is going to run. This is what is going to run for us. So lately in our Ghana budget, our, our main, the theme for the Ghanaian budget this 2022 is they said building a sustainable entrepreneurial nation with the physical consolidation and job creation and this is really the theme for for this 2022 budget that's for the Ghana government and you will notice that the budget the theme for the budget itself helps us to know that it's seeking to restore the microeconomic stability in the nation and it seeks to do that through physical policies and then trying to help them to maintain the debt that we in ghana face in terms of the debt sustainability by trying to help us manage debt and because of that government will enact a lot of policies to ensure that um, they, they are in a better position to manage the debt not too long ago you and i have been hearing so much about the national debt sometimes we behave we don't mind or we don't it doesn't affect us but whether you like it or not if you're a Ghanaian, if you're a small and medium enterprise it will affect you because government will not want to go down the drain whatever government what what government wants is that it will try to enact policies such that they will also be able to manage from their side in terms of uh, the, the budget or the debt that it's uh, that faces them so one of the things that I want to talk about, typically which is affecting SMEs for me now, is the taxes that government is bringing across. And I think that if there's anything, I want to talk about taxes, that's a fiscal policy aspect, that's fiscal, fiscal policy aspect, where which involves government uh, spending, either government spends to enhance, enhance either it spends to enhance uh, the economy or it constricts spending to, to constrict the economy or it increases taxes to expand the economy or government will want to cut down taxes to cut down businesses and this is what really it's happening a little tax whether you like it or not has uh, more than a rippling effect that we can actually see so if you look at ghana for example this e-levy tax i want to talk about this whether we like it or not the e-levy tax is going to take us back and i like what um, dr adiola just said that even in branding ourselves we need to use the, the the social media or internet wisely to brand ourselves if businesses want to brand themselves how would they do it if e-levy is is, is 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 gone up and i mean that is what everybody is fighting now but whether we like it or not if e-levy goes up even during COVID time a lot of us have resigned ourselves to the use of what e-products in terms of even when it comes to financing 
And what I, I want to take it up from that point to explain that, look, if e-levy is, comes really, it's, it's enforced, which is supposed to be from 1st of February, if it's really being enforced right now, then it goes to show that a lot of people are going to cut back and hold money. Because, for example, if I have to use um, the, I mean, uh, the, uh, the, I, I have to use uh, um, the technology to be able to enhance my financial position. You know, the technology was restricting us and was reducing our use of the brick and mortar space. So now, what government has done is try to is trying to push us back into what we used to do, where we we we, we held money on ourselves not too long ago. Government wanted us all of us to go cashless. But now with the e-levy, a lot of us who have logged on money on various portals and our, we, we put it on our momos and our, I mean, we do a lot of financing and all that, it ha it's going to, we are going to hold back to money. And really, if we really hold back to money, whether we like it or not, it will lead to what? An increase in money supply. Because when people are holding back to money, it means that they hold more money than they want. So you see that uh, what what eventually it will have a backlash of government. When people hold money, they are we move to cash, and people are holding on to cash transactions. Basically, it will increase money supply. If money supply is increased, you and I would have to know that whether we like it or not. If it doesn't synchronize with goods and services that are produced within the economy, it presumes that what there's going to be an inflation. If there's inflation, it means that prices are hiking and they are going up and if prices go up what happens is that it's going to erode what people's purchasing power and whether we like it or not this are, this is what the smes must praise themselves with. once pe people's purchasing power is eroded the rippling effect of the e-levy once their purchasing power is eroded it's presumed that they will not be able to buy SMEs will find themselves not being able to produce and to produce effectively or get the maximum aggregate demand that they would really want once they don't get the aggregate demand it means that their profits they have to actually uh, put themselves in a position where they have to work to make be able to make profit if they want to remain in their space in business so government really is going to have issues when they bring the ill more money will chase fewer more money will chase fewer goods inflation will come up and this is going to bring about another thing that government will have to do through the central bank and once we have so much money in circulation government will want to apply monetary policies not very i mean uh, uh, for the past i think for the past six months or so interest rates has remained stagnant but now interest rates are about 14 that's the discount rate in terms of government policy rates it's about 14.5 government policy rate being 14.5 has a lot of effect on interest rate that is what the banks are going to charge because that is the base rate for the banks to actually put up how much they want to charge on businesses and this is what is going to affect the SMEs because if banks banks uh, the interest rate or the discount the discount rate that's how much central uh, business or well, banks will go to central bank to go and borrow at the discount rate and banks are in there for business banks are in for profit and therefore they would want to throw it back to the public to the cons consumers so they will increase their interest rates chargeable on loanable funds so if smes are going for funds it means that they are not going to get cheap so you see just one e-levy has a rippling effect they are not going to get their funds cheap and if they don't get it cheap it means that it will cut back production they will have to cut back production in managing their profits and when they cut back production, it's still having to going back to have a rippling effect on us. Once production is cut, our GDP will go low, the economy will come back to square one. So the, the effects are die. I mean, it's die. We need to relook look at some of these things in the uh, SME space. SMEs must look at this. Either they want to decide that they are going to pay taxes because if they do that, then they'll make much profit because SMEs are in there also to make so much money in terms of profit. Or they, they decide that they want to just uh, um, maybe cajole governments or they want to throw back the, the taxes on consumers and when they throw back the taxes on consumers in other words that 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 taxes on consumers it goes back still to erode the individual's what purchasing power and once we don't have enough money to consume it's it, it, it sells us that what we will not be able to buy aggregate demand will reduce and once aggregate demand goes down still SMEs will not be in business. So we are not talking about today. We are not talking about the effect in the short run. But in the long run, the rippling effect are dying. It is important that we look at this space so that we'll be able to run. I mean, the SMEs must be able to know how they get their money. And SMEs that are hard hit on some of these things are those that really rely on credit 
for their day-to-day -day running, I mean, their day-to-day -day operations. If SMEs will continue to rely on credit for their day-to-day -day operations, then this will really have impact on them. If they will rather look at maybe trying to, um, like, like I was telling somebody today, the Joseph effect, looking at the times that they have so much money, and then put some aside or invest in very good investment vehicles and make much more money so that they can use if they still want to go back to the banks to collect loans or to ask for loans and things like that then it means that the effect is going to have a backlash on them invariably it will come back to you and i who are the consumers of final products and that is where we will find ourselves it's it's quite a, a serious thing Thank you very if much. You, if you leave me, I'll continue talking because yes, there are so I, many I was I was going to say that I was going to say that your analysis is the analysis of an academic. So every every aspect must be touched. <laughs> so that's amazing. Um, and but I want to ask a question based on what you said. But before that, let me just read one or two comments. Uh, I, I I like some of the comments that I'm seeing. Uh, Tungi says when politics is for reference instead of influence. I always like the way he uses words. When politics is for reference instead of influence, people will die to get into offices while things don't change. Then James says that, uh, yes, SMEs are the lifeblood of every economy, a country. Policies must help, not hinder SME development and growth. And then improper taxes keep many micro and small businesses in informal sector of the economy. Informal sector meaning they simply dodge the taxes, right, James? And then uh, our government prefer telling time. Oops. <laughs> Being gatemen and building gates, these are gross. There is a gross misunderstanding of how to innovate governance with technology. That is absolutely amazing. Now, it, it, based on what I've what I've seen from these uh, technocrats in themselves in the audience, I want to ask Dr. Jeha and uh, brief, uh, very briefly, and uh, uh, Dr. Oblariri. Uh, do you think that government is out of touch with the needs of small businesses? Now, that's the first question. And the second one is, do you think SMEs are out of touch with the opportunities that governments, you know, provide? So who is out of touch here? Uh, let me, let, because Dr. Jia has just spoken, I'll allow you to gather your thoughts, and then I'll come back to Dr. Emeka. Please go ahead, uh, I'll unmute you. Seriously, I think that government must reconsider if you ask me, I would say that really government is not um, what really would grow an economy. Government is not looking there. Government has not got its eye on those, the SMEs. Because seriously, I keep saying that if you are taxing and you are asking money, you must also think of the welfare of the taxpayer. It is very, very important. It gets to a point, there's a threshold beyond which the taxpayer would have to either dodge the tax, evade the tax. Recently, not too long ago, just to be able to tell a story, a friend of mine, actually started a business and because of taxes because of SNIT, because of payments because he has a business and he has employed a number of people and what happened is that i'm telling this story to be able to tell whether we are in touch or not and some of these things yeah and it's a true story and what the issue is that the, the, the person could not manage a SNIT payment he could not manage not that he could not manage but i think the trepidation and the the, the, the worry from SNIT payments of um, salary payments, paying of GRA and things like that, I missed even paying corporate tax, income tax and all that were too much for that person. So what the person did simply was that I'm going to sell off my company, sell off my company to anybody who would buy it, sell off my company mm -hmm. to anybody who would buy it. And truly the person found somebody buying their company. What the person, when the person bought the company, the person did not continue running the company. After the company has been sold, bear in mind, people have been laid off. When people have been laid off, it's coming back to unemployment, backlashing on the economy. This person tells me, look, after selling my company, look, I am free from paying what? Corporate tax. I am free from paying what? Income tax for customers. I am free from paying salaries. I am free from paying what? SNITs. I have my money. I just went and put it in government bills, treasury bills. Mm. I'm rich. I'm risk averse. <laughs> So I am just relaxing and the ma how much money I'm gleaning out of that investment is even much more than when I was actually in business and paying salaries. So this is what I'm trying to mm. say. If government does not pay attention to the taxpayers in terms of small and business, small and medium term enterprises like this one I'm talking about, they will fold up. And if mm. they fold up, we should know that we are constricting our economy. 
when we constrict our economy it will backlash us the rippling effect is that the economy will come crumbling down when there's unemployment the social vices we cannot manage it and governments will now have to pay so much money to ensure that the economy is running and all that can happen so governments really yeah. really must be in touch with what the smes are doing smes must also not lose sight of what government is doing because government can be sometimes i say that government can be erratic government mm. will want to fund their debt pay their monies and clear their every that's what they intend to do and so whichever way whether through the monetary policy through central banks monetary policy or through government's own fiscal policies whichever way they want to tend to be able to manage so that they will at the end of the day they get the praises that government is doing well they will do to the expense of smes and i am happy with doc, uh, the doctor that just spoke about uh, politics seriously it ties in there i like the combination of what we are talking about because then it bounces back to politics because whatever yeah. it is government is in there to satisfy a certain agenda of theirs and for all you know smes is not part of it even though mm. we all know the books are showing and the records are there that the small and medium enterprises are there just before the i address your question i just want to say that um we are in Africa and we are looking at, we are all putting our eyes also on the sustainable development goals. If you look at the goal eight, it talks about, record, the goal eight recognizes that, look, if we create decent jobs, it goes to, I mean, develop, I mean, sustainability. Mm. So it is important. Ghana here, for example, I'm saying it to the hearing of the SMEs because if you look at the poverty and the social exclusion, even in Ghana, it has even deepened. Even when it comes to the financial crisis, the COVID also makes it worse. It comes to exacerbate it. So I think that we must relook look at it as SMEs. I think Shadrach has advised SMEs a lot. If you look at mm -hmm. unemployment levels in Ghana now, in total, it's about 11.9%. If you look at um, the, the those in, within the working age, within the ages of 14, I think 15 to about 24, I think that the unemployment level is about 25.9%. That is quite high. And if you want to just oppose this with even the sustainable development goals, it talks about the fact that the vulnerable, because the sustainable development goal 8 is talking about decent employment. And it says that in Ghana alone, the vulnerable businesses that we have, the employment is about 68.6%. It means that there are kind of businesses that are almost, if you push them a little bit, they will collapse. Mm. So SMEs, what I'm trying to also advise is that you must understand your situation. You must understand what government is doing. You must understand what where government tends to be able to hurt you even the more. And so plan SMEs. Look for what uh, the Bible will say. I'm a Christian, so I always try to add my lectures with scripture. If you look at Genesis 41, it talks about the Joseph words, the Joseph effect. Look at the times that you are better off and save for the what for the for the lean season. So SMEs must not just rely on just credit. We know that in finance, we say that if you borrow or you are highly leveraged in terms of um, you use more debt than, than than equity, then it is presumed that you are in good business because then you do your business very well to be able to pay yourself and pay your your your, your lender, the one who lended to the bank, give you the money. So people think that if you borrow money, um, you are. But in an environment that we are like Ghana, I would say that you would borrow little. Let's don't be too highly leveraged in terms of borrowing to fund your day-to-day -day operations. Try mm. to. I mean, save money, try to see how best you can cut down on a lot of things. There are some some SMEs when they start, they are a bit, I mean, all out there trying to do things like um, we have just said, so we have just heard from Adiola, use more of, I mean, every a lot of businesses are now reducing to just the internet without even mm. using the brick and mortar kind of business where you have to, you, you hail on yourself so much cost in terms of cost of your 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 business funding your business will be too expensive so try to just suppose and look at what you can do under the circumstance especially in what we are facing now try and look at what we are facing now and just put yourself in a, in a situation where your profits will not be eroded so that in your event of your business you also be able to save a bit so that you can have money for your lean season i would want to say that 
government will want to do everything government knows that when they push you away or push the smes away they are destroying the economy but they will do it anyway because it goes to what buttress what they are doing in terms of what they want to put across their policies their programs that they want to put across they don't care about what happens but you must be in the business space because you are helping a cause you are helping a cause in terms of employment you are helping a cause in terms of trying to even grow the gdp you are helping a cause by trying to i mean put a lot of giving people what purchasing power allowing people to have money so please just work things out within the space in which you can understand what is happening around you just don't be naive don't behave as if you don't know what is happening a lot of SMEs, seriously i think that they must go for training they need to be trained they need to understand the terrain in which they are they need to understand the economic environment in which they are what affects them what doesn't affect them even they can apply for tax holidays which some a lot of smes don't know but depending mm. on what you produce depending on what you do you can apply for tax holidays these are some of the good things that you can glean on in order to stay in business such that whatever government does you still stay focused for me i think that you must be proactive smes and still remain because we are relying on you anyway to grow our economy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Leverage what we have. There is there are opportunities that we have existing in our nations as bad as they seem that we can leverage. Thank you.